Welcome to Journey Through the Gate, your paranormal portal podcast, as we delve into the many questions and wonders brought on by the supernatural experience. What's on the other side of the gate? Let's find out together. Yeah, I'm free for the rest of the night. So I'm like, I got a few, I got a few, you know, I got a yeah. few good ones. I don't have like, you know, whole extensive, That's okay. you know, That's okay. 20 of them, but well, I, I just have, figured since you know, we're drinking tonight, I want to, I want to introduce yeah, you to fun. a friend of mine and I never got his name, but I call him a shot of tequila, no salt. You want to hear it? <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay. I was tending bar. Don't don't forget to hit the record button. Oh yeah, we're oh we're recording. <laughs> I'm not okay. losing. I'm not, I'm not losing this goal, baby. Okay, you never know. <laughs> so, I'm at this bar, and it was crazy because I'm the only one there, and I wound up being a manager at this place, and they offered me this job and a salary plus tips, and I'm like, I got kids to feed, why not? And they said, Well, we're sports bar, and I said, Awesome, and I go in and I said, Okay. And they said, well, basically, we're a sports bar, and we want you to manage it, and it, it might be a little haunted. Do you have any problem with that? And I said, no, I don't have a problem with that. And they said, well, do you have a, do you have a permit to carry? And I went, okay, I might have a problem with that. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only job that I've ever had. <laughs> I swear. It was that kind of, you know. And I said, yeah, we're good. Don't worry. I got, I got Everything's good. So... They said, okay, well, you might be here alone, and it's a little haunted, and, you, you know, you might need some protection. I'm like, I've got it. I'm good to go. I'm good. So they said, well, it's a sports bar. We have no cable. There's no smoking. The kitchen is broken. We're not running any food. We have uh, no beer, and we have some liquor, and you need to take it from there. And I'm like, okay. So I said, okay, I'm just going to open it up to be an open mic kind of send all my musician friends in there. And we had a ball and the place was packed and we had a wonderful time. Now I'm sitting there and it happens to be a moat. It's like a beautiful hotel with this beautiful lounge that wasn't being used. And luckily we started bringing life back into it. And it turned out that most of the guys that were TDY at the base, which was right across the street, would wind up staying there. And I really got to know everybody. On People don't know what TDY is. That's temporary duty. You're in the military and you come and you stay for a while. It could be anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of months. So they would wind up staying at this hotel. So I really got to know these people. They come in, they sit in my bar and they talk to me. And I had this one guy. And he would come in right about when I started opening about 4.30. And I'm, you know, setting all the things up in the in the bottles. You know, you're putting all the pour spouts and stuff. And you're, you're getting all your bars set up. And he's sitting there. And I got him a beer, which is what he always had. And I got him a bowl of peanuts. And I gave him a bunch of, since the kitchen was closed, I gave him a bunch of takeout menus. Because I would call and order food. I said, man, when's the last time you ate? I know you. You don't normally eat, you know, lunch and stuff. And I said, you need to eat. You know, you've been working hard. You look kind of, you know, wrung out. And he was like, yeah, man. He goes, man, I just really miss my kids. I've been gone a month now. And he starts telling me this long story about as cute as I'll get out. He was putting a, a swing set for his kids. And he was really missing his family and just reminiscing. And I'm listening to him. He says, yeah, I really got to eat. I'm starting to get a headache. I'm going to order, probably order a burger or something. I'll have you call it. Let me pick something. And I said, okay. And I'm looking in the mirror as I'm setting up the bottles, and I see this gray mist in the mirror. As you look in the bar, you see everything behind you in the mirror. And the gray mist is kind of hovering behind him. Honestly, the first thing I thought was, I got to clean that mirror. You know how a mirror will get like a haze to it. And I didn't think anything of it, and I'm listening to him talk, and he's telling me this story about the swing set he's putting together, or did put together for his kids. And I said, yeah, man, you know, I understand. You're going to be home in a couple of days. It'll all be cool, you know. You'll get to see them. I'm sure they're doing fine and all this other stuff, chit-chatting. And I turned to look at him. And he all of a sudden lays his hands out kind of across the bar and kind of drops his head a little bit. And I said, man, are you okay? I thought he was passing out. 
And I said, are you okay? And he looks up at me and his whole face kind of changed a little bit. And his mannerisms changed a little bit. And I swear to you, his voice changed a little bit. And he looked up at me real slow. He lifted his head. He looks at me and he says, shot of tequila, no salt. And I was kind of taken back because I had never seen this guy drink other than a beer. And he still had the beer in front of him. It was right in mid-conversation about this swing set he was putting together and all this. His whole body just changed. And Mm. I was like, okay, um, do you have a preference on that tequila-wise? He says, gold. And he's never been that blunt with me before. And I said, okay. And I go over there, I grab the Jose Cuervo, and I pour out a shot. I sit it in front of him. And now he's pulling up his sleeves and he's rolling them up. You know, like you roll up your long sleeves, you know. Yeah, for sure. And he looks at the shot and he picks it up and he shoots it down, slams it down on the bar, reaches in his pocket and pulls out a couple dollars because need change, need change for the pool table. I said, right away, man. I go over and I get changed and I put the quarters in front of him, stack them up in front of him. He grabs them and he kind of looks at me and smiles a little bit. And I'm like, dang, this is weird. You know, but you just... You, you, you're a bartender so you're handling stuff i'd seen things as a bartender you're just playing out you're watching body language you're, everything's going off in you at the same time but you're watching everything this, this is so weird never saw him play pool before he goes over and the first thing he does is he goes over to the jukebox and he drops a couple in and i just say okay so, you know apparently he just changed wind on me no big deal i'm going to keep setting up the bar He puts on something on the jukebox. He goes over and he drops quarters down the pool table. And I see him set everything up. Now he's playing pool. And he's he's sinking those things like a pro. I'm telling you, he's clearing that pool table. And he's dancing around with the pool stick. And I'm like, I've never seen this guy like this before. (laughs) Totally different personality, right? Totally different. And he comes up. And now I've got a couple come in, so I'm kind of like taking care of their stuff. And she gets a margarita, so I'm making frozen drinks and stuff. And I'm still watching him. I'm like, I've never seen this. So he comes back up, and his beer's still sitting there. The bowl of peanuts he was eating still sitting there. And he comes up, and I said, you know, you're really hungry. Are you ready to order some food? I'll call takeout. We'll, we'll get it right to you. You need to eat. And he said, shot of tequila, no salt. I said, man, okay. So what do you do? You go get him another shot. I got him another shot, and I sat it in front of him. He shot it down. He goes back, and he continues his pool game, and I'm, you know, and I got some more people coming in. I take care of him. I'm watching him. He's doing the same thing. He's dancing around, having a blast, having time of his life. And I'm taking care of the other people, and I go back in the back, and I get some beer, and I bring it up, and I'm stocking a beer cooler, and I'm watching. And then he comes down back to the end of the bar and he sits down in his chair and he pushes the beer away and he sits down and his arms go onto the bar and he puts his head down and I'm thinking okay that tequila is getting to him he's got to eat something and I go over to the guy and I tap him on the arm I said man can I please order you something you know I I really think you should eat and he looks at me he, he picks up his head and he looks at me and he goes Cisco he goes I don't feel good he goes I think I should just go back to my room he said, do you think you could have something ordered and sent up to me? And I said, sure. He said, I just want I just want to pay for this beer. And I went over and I looked at him and his whole body had changed. And I looked up when I went to go pick up his tab off his, um, and I wrote everything down on a little pad. And I looked back mm-hmm. up and I was standing right in front of the mirror and I looked up at the mirror and the spot wasn't there. And I said, holy mackerel. That guy just got jumped and I mm-hmm. scratched off the two shots of tequila, and I just charged him for the beer. Yeah, for sure. Because he got jumped. And it happened again about a month later. A little man came in there who was drinking cranberry juice, and all of a sudden he looked up at me, and he rolled up his sleeves, and he looked at me, and he goes, I'll have a shot of tequila, no salt, and then he changed for the pool table. And I went, uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> Now, you tell me that jumpers don't exist. You know what I'm saying? That oh, was I know exactly what you're saying. Crazy. Yeah. 
that was crazy, you know, and that man had no idea. So how am I going to charge him for a couple of shots of tequila? He really didn't drink, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you had him in your hand, but I'm pretty, pretty sure you were not the one that drank right. them. Right. You know? the, the, the caveat to that whole thing is I saw that I probably worked there a year and I saw it three times and Another time I was going, I was fixing to leave. I was getting off shift and another bartender was in and it sounds funny, but it was, uh, an older lady. Um, you know, I don't want to say old lady, but she was older and she was there with her, I guess her daughter and her niece or something. They were one of those little chatty kind of party kind of things. And all of a sudden, I'm fixing to leave, and I'm, you know, we counted out our tips and everything, and I'm grabbing my purse, and I'm just counting out my tip money. And the lady leans across the thing. She starts rolling up her sleeves, and she goes, I need change for the pool table, and I have a shot of tequila, no salt. And I went, she's going to need more change for the <laughs> for the jukebox, <laughs> And I left, because how are you going to explain something like that? Nobody's going to believe you. Can't. Nobody's no, gonna believe nobody's going to believe you at all. <laughs> How cool is that? I mean, it's crazy too, but you know, I've heard many of people say that people will stay back because it's th something they're familiar with, whether it be drug abuse or alcohol or bar fights. I mean, even Echo Bodine, you know, she's been in this for years. She, she said she went into Gillies. And she was really there to take care of that whole, I don't know if you're familiar with Gillies being so haunted and stuff, but she was there to take care of the whole uh, guys in the cellar with throwing the head in the well and all that kind of stuff. And she goes up into the bar and she says, four guys up there, basically jumpers, like I explained. And she said, you're not interested in crossing, are you? And they're like, no, we like to get into bar fights. We like to drink beer. We like the music. We're not going nowhere. So the, the ghost world is pretty vast, and there's a lot of different kinds in it. You can't put them all in one category, man. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, because there's so many different, you know, for lack of a better term, so many different spectrums, or yeah. uh, spectrums, spectrums yeah, of gotcha. any kind of paranormal activity, and that's that's one of them, you know what I mean? It's It's... I don't know. It's one of the things that always drew me, you know, in was, you know, you have the residual hauntings, the the intelligent hauntings, the, right. you know, possessions per se, right. um, you know, just things like that. And it's, you know, after, you know, I converted to my current spirituality, it's it's I don't want to say it's given me a better understanding of it, but it kind of has mm -hmm. um, it's. I, and it and it really even hasn't made me more open to it because I've always been open to it because I've always experienced it myself. But you know, once I started getting into the um, you know spirituality that I'm into, and you know, I even even though you have that aspect of it, you also have to think logically. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I haven't looked into the science aspect of it mm -hmm. because I'm just that type of person. I, I have to know all about it, not just what I think about it. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's like super important is, is looking at all the angles of everything. And, and I mean, I, the way you know that's such a cool story it's that was a cool story though i mean but you know <laughs> i can't go up to the guy and tell him i mean the only thing i could do was have the manager the <laughs> night manager go and check and make sure he made it to his room okay the guy had yeah, a horrible for sure. headache yeah. he had no memory of it exactly you know, yep who am I to tell this guy he just got jumped into but if you think about the science aspect of it if you think about energy the guy missed his kids the guy was somewhat depressed his vibrations were lowered he was tired he was hungry his defenses were down okay he was I don't want to say an easy target but he was an easier target if you think about all well, the things we've yeah. heard about lower vibrations, he was vulnerable exactly at that point in time because I've seen that same gray fog you know in that mirror 
and I've seen it without the mirror, just head on watching it, go behind everybody sitting behind the bar and just kind of testing out. You know, I call it cracks in your windshield. If you've got vulnerabilities, you've got your emotions, whatever, are low, you might be an easier target. I haven't pl- I, I haven't quite put my finger on all of it, but there's an aspect to that that's very intriguing. It seems that it's easier in some ways because why is it skipping some and jumping in others? There's got to be mm-hmm. a reason for that. So that makes exactly. sense to me. That makes sense to me, you know, and yeah, you're vulnerable, it, yeah you're, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And if you, if you've lowered that in some way, whether you're real drunk or whatever, and I always tell everybody, you know, uh, we've all been there. We've all got a past. We've all been, you know, in, in some ways, you know, had, had a good, gone out and had a good time. And, you know, if you're going in something like that and you're drinking, not all blackouts are due to the alcohol alone. You know, you might've been jumped yep. and you never know it. And you're not going to know it. And I think it's more prevalent than people think. And it's scary, but it's also eye-opening at the same time. Like, whoa, maybe I don't want to lower my, you know, my defenses so much. Maybe I want to think about that because the stuff is out there. If you want to bring in the science stuff of it, we we had mentioned Tesla before. And I wanted yes. to get your, get your aspect on this. We're talking about quantum physics. We're talking about dimensions i don't know how you believe in you know what you think about all that i personally believe that there are multiple dimensions because i don't know Mm -hmm. enough to say i don't believe it you feel me so Mm -hmm. as far as dimensions go i just listened to a new video on the whole thing about tesla and have you ever done a uh, mystery uh mysterious circumstances on tesla not yet. Um, I've yeah. tossed around the idea just to separate fact from fiction. Mm-hmm. And um, ironically enough, before I started Rev 96, I, I gave a lot of serious thought to doing um, a separate podcast on just um, biographies of mm-hmm. historical figures to mm-hmm. to specifically separate the fact from fiction right and um that would have entailed so much more time yeah Tarn. that i really it's really wouldn't have been feasible right but with the wild west figures um and doc holiday was probably the exception um and i do have wyatt Earp coming up at the end of august as well mm-hmm. um the you know I cover all kinds of stuff, and yeah, I I usually do like stuff that I can investigate. But I think with people like that, it's super important to get it. Right. The reason that I consider it mysterious circumstances is because Doc Holliday has this persona, but nobody really knows who he really was, and that was my goal. I was like, I'm going to tell people who he was, where he came from, and you know, separate the fact from fiction. Right. And um, I'm going to do that with Wyatt Earp because I I can personally tell you right now, I've already started um, a little bit of research on Wyatt Earp while I was researching Doc Holliday. And it's one of those episodes that's going to blow people's minds because I can personally tell you right now, the people who think they know about Wyatt Earp don't know anything because – there is so much more, but Nikola Tesla is, he's one of those people too. And to be honest with you, there's a very good chance that he will be a future episode. Mm -hmm. And the main reason being is because when he died, um, his place was ransacked by the government and the FDA because of the information and the research that he had done Mm -hmm. that was not released to the public. Nikola Tesla's goal was to provide the world with free energy. Mm -hmm. And he accomplished that goal. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the fact that the FDA think about that's the, that's the drug administration. (laughs) I know. man. What did this guy figure out? I know. I know. So that warranted the FDA to raid not really raid, I can't say that, but to ransack and take possession of like 90% of 
this guy's research. Yep. What did he know and what did he figure out that the world does not know about? He had something. So, he had something. Yeah, so and he I, will, I stumbled he will on definitely, something. Yeah. I'm going to send it to you. I stumbled on something. It might be complete BS. You know, I mean, I don't know enough to to say. I'm going to say I'm on the fence, but I'm, I've am i swung my la- legs over on the side of the fence of what if. If, if what this thing says is true, it connects Tesla into quantum physics as far as dimensions and how many dimensions he believed in for the reasons he believed in them. Apparently, he's up to 23 or got up to 23. Yeah. And he explained the different dimensions. It mm-hmm. snaps puzzle pieces into the whole big picture of interdimensionals coming over and going back. Um, I don't know what he named. I don't know that he named anything specifically. But other things I've heard about, like Bigfoot and Grinning Man and some of these other things that can seem to jump in and out of whatever you want to say, dimensions or portals or ley lines that, you know, the energy is just right. We're talking energy. I don't know enough to say that doesn't exist. I'm more of the what if and look into it and go, why not? Uh, yeah, for Because sure. I don't know. But if Tesla did do that, his explanation of things seem to almost make it the right word here predict in the future that we would come up with energy to mess with those dimensions and Mm. overlap them and explain something that was very close to what we're calling now the mandela effect Yes, With yes. Two and dimensions I, overlapping. I don't know if you noticed when I uh, in my Facebook group, I posted um, about the Mandela effect not too long ago. It was probably about a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. And it's really funny because um, the Hadron Collider, mm-hmm. when they fired that thing up for the first time, <laughs> yeah. um, Stephen Hawking was like, don't do that. Mm hmm. Because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you right now, Stephen Hawking is going to tell me not to do something. Yes. Because of – Right. Because even he doesn't know what's going to happen. There's a good chance I'm probably going to take this dude's advice, okay? Right. Right. And the – it's weird because the Mandela effect, you never saw any real reports of it before they fired off the Hadron Collider. Yep. And then and let's it, bring in CERN. And I, oh, I jumped down that rabbit hole, Cisco. I jumped down that rabbit hole so deep. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. There's something going on with when and they if, fired that off. Yeah, babe. You know? And let, let's bring in CERN. And if you look at what Tesla was saying, supposedly, again, I have no basis for this other than this information. And I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. If that's true, if what's being said is true, and again, I will send you the video. Okay. Then two weeks, three weeks ago, I did an interview with Bill Bean, who is basically a spiritual warrior. He goes in and he helps people and families and everything. This man is all over the place all the time. He's got a big, he's got a long history story. The man has been through it. Um, And he's a friend and I talked to him. And he said something on my show that made me look into it. And then all of a sudden I get this Tesla stuff. And then I get somebody else on my show that's basically saying the same thing. And I'm going, wait a minute. I'd be an idiot if I didn't look at all this and go, the, I'm hearing the pieces actually snap into place, the puzzle pieces. You know, and I'm going, if it's possible. I mean, we started this conversation talking about the Philadelphia Experiment. Okay. Exactly. And Tesla, like I said, Tesla right. was a part of that. Right. And, right. and if you think yeah. that it's possible, possible, if you think that um, this the military weaponizing things, whatever, you know, whether you want to talk about our government, other governments, governments working together, aliens helping, whatever you want to bring into it. The point is mute to the point of 
things can happen that are out of our thought process at this time. If you really think about science and you think about quantum physics and you think about if we start messing with that, what are we doing? If energy, you know, if dimensions are there and the veil is thin between the two dimensions, if other things can come over, it doesn't mean that they can't come and go as they please just because we don't know how to do it. And who says we don't? If we're doing things like CERN and HARP and messing with weather, and there's been lots of scientific um, information on that, let's just call it information, and there is something to this Mandela effect. It could be just bad mm-hmm. memory. Could be bad memory. J.C. Penney's might not have never been J.C. Penney's. It might have just been. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I swear the Bernstein Bears was Bernstein Bears and not Bernstein. Well, yeah. And the, and the best swear. part is um, with the Mandela effect, I do have a close friend of mine who did a uh, poltergeist episode with me, the Odin Fires uh, poltergeist episode that I did. Okay. Um, she is she is a scientist. And, um, you know, she she actually provided a few good articles um, in that comment thread when I posted about, you know, my personal theory on or not my personal theory, but what I was looking into with the Hadron Collider and the and the Mandela effect, you right. know, being intertwined somehow. And she she messaged me separately. And she's like, I she's like, I don't even want to know how many people I pissed off in your group by posting those threads. And I'm like, no, I was like, that's that's what I love, though, we is that know. I, I want all angles of it. Right. Like, I want I want all information like because sometimes people do, you know, and for lack of a better term, sometimes people do believe things naively without actually doing the research or looking right, into right, it. Right, right, But at the same time, personally, I think it's odd, the timing and yeah. the Mandela effect. I'm, I'm sorry, but there are things that yes. I can specifically remember yes. that – are not the same as they are now you know it's like no it's like that that one hit me right in the childhood like there's no way like i remember this this specific way i remember (laughs) and and there's some things i don't remember that people are saying the symbols i can kind of like okay that could be suggestion that i'm remembering that but like curious george having a tail yes you know i can remember picking up the book now this is going to make me sound like a uh just horrible with labels and everything else but i promise you it was an innocent thought i remember somebody gave my son some books he was little and it was all bernstein berenstein excuse me bears and i was in that whole thought process of it was it was at christmas time or right before christmas it was about six different books and they had some like everyday books and there was one in there with christmas you know, like Berenstein Bears with a Christmas tree in their cave, whatever it was. And I thought, that's interesting because Berenstein is a Jewish name. I wonder if they're going to give the Jewish faith the same respect and put out a book that actually has menorahs and things like that. In Because I thought, you know, it, it would be cool if the Berenstein Bears had a menorah and a Christmas tree. I'm just saying for the Jewish kids who would like to be represented. That's all I was thinking. And I tell you what, like one subject I am going to cover in the future is the Dybbuk box. Speaking of oh. of Jewish, oh. re- the Jewish religion. Oh, yes, absolutely. Very interesting topic. Absolutely. But uh, I actually remember holding that book and explaining it to my son. I said, we should go and find that because you should learn about that, too. It's a really interesting story because I'm all about teaching them everything and letting them pick their own path. I mean, I know that sounds like a really weird concept. But I want them to know everything and pick what's right feels right for them. If you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, exactly. And no, I, thought I agree. One hundred percent. The bears should have had a menorah in it, and they should have explained the whole reasoning behind the menorah and the oil and all that stuff. And I didn't see it, and I thought it was really weird. Well, I wouldn't have had that thought if it was Baron Stain. Do you get yeah. my point? So yeah. something. Oh, is I totally up. get the point. Yeah. They may have just changed it for whatever reason and then you know no mandela effect you know but there are many things that i remember i remember john carpenter dying and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. he's not dead i i don't understand that so if if this this video 
and if this research that I've done on, on Tesla is true, basically all he said is there was going to be something that not just one government, but multiple governments were involved in. And he called it, I can't remember what he called it, but he was basically saying CERN that it was going to mess around till it split something open and made two dimensions that were similar, basically a parallel universe melt into each other and it would change little tiny things but enough to be noticed and then there was another dimension that wouldn't be affected as much and then another and another and another and it goes Mm -hmm. on to explain but how wild is that you know and if that matches up with something somebody else told me and then I mean there's a time where you've got to stop poo-pooing stuff and just go wait a minute I got to look at this because what if, what if, and if that's true, then all the things that Tesla was saying, apparently there were some things that were saved from there. I don't know. That's why I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future you doing a thing on that because you can tell me a little bit about what happened there because I'm not certainly not an expert in any way on Tesla. I know a little bit of this and a little bit of that, a little bit about Faraday, you know, but it, it just well, if, I tell strange. you what, if I do an episode on it, you will be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. And I, and, I, and I have no doubt in that, you know. <laughs> but if you look, if, you, if we step back away from it, Justin, and we look at it, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about history. We've talked about paranormal. I mean, out of all the paranormal experiences that you've had personally, what was the one that you stood back and went, what's happening here and made you look into it more? What was the one that oh, convinced man. you something I would is have happening? To, I would have to say it's two of them um, that really affected me to the point where I literally took a step back and was like, what, mm-hmm. what happened? Mm-hmm. Um, the first one being, Um, I grew up out in the country and, um, when I was 16, we moved into town. Um, I was not a huge fan. I grew up out in the country. Um, I loved roaming around in the woods and the cornfields doing my thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when we moved into town, I was not a happy, happy camper, um, I mean, I, I grew up in town when I was young, but after experiencing the country life for, for, you know, 10 plus years, you know, but the thing about it was when we moved into town, the very first thing, um, was I walked in the basement of the house that, that my mom had bought. And, um, the first thing I saw down there were, were spray painted crucifixes on the floor and on the windows of the basement. And I was like, well, I was like, that's, you know, kind of odd. Well, you know, fast forward, you know, we're living there for a year, two years. Um, you know, we, you know, I, I'll be honest. I was the only one in my family. There were five kids in my family. And um, I was the only one who really ever went down there. Um, and and I specifically, for some odd reason, felt very, very comfortable down there. I would go down there for hours at a time and just listen to the doors, you know, maybe, you know, drink a little bit while I was underage. My parents <laughs> did not know, you know, maybe, you know, partake in some recreations that. Yep are legal in other states, you know, and Mm -hmm. I, that, that was me, you know, though, you know, the dogs wouldn't go down there. Um, the cat was the only one who would go down there with me. So, uh, you know, I always found that odd, but the construction of the basement was also very odd because when you'd go down the stairs and it was an unfinished basement. So we had concrete floors, concrete walls, um, you know, it was moldy down there. It was damp in some areas, you know, but I didn't care. And, you know, I don't know. I always felt like just, just comfortable, you know, and, um, we heard stories. We later heard stories about, you know, there being people who lived there previous to us that were, you know, possibly into the occult 
you know, or, and whatever else. Now, obviously, I, I even as a 16, 17 year old kid, I went to the library and looked up the research of this house because I'm like, OK, if, if this is true, then there has to be something, some kind of documented evidence that somebody had lived there previously to me. So I looked up, you know, previous owners because, you know, if you know, for those of you who don't know, that information is not hard to find. Right. You know, you, you can literally go to the courthouse or the library and look up information on your on the previous owners of land or houses in your in your area. So I did the research. Nothing really poked out to me. But there are always those stories. And then and then us moving in, you know, with the crucifixes painted on the floor and the windows. I was like, well, you, you know, you never know. But. As soon as we moved in, I started having really weird dreams, and it was nothing really in particular. It was just random stuff that was just, you know, off the beaten path. And, like, I can't really remember. I'm going to be honest. I can't really really remember specifically, like, anything that stuck out. It was just really odd stuff. So I was about 17 years old. The first one was, uh, yeah, I was about 17 years old, and – um I had a friend who was 21. Um, my buddy was my same age. His name was also Justin. Um, his older brother's name was Ryan. And I actually got along with Ryan better than I did Justin. He was 21. So, you know, he was my booze hookup, you know, and um, we hung out quite a bit. Well, you know, he would pick me up on the weekends and we'd go to, you know, the neighboring towns, you know, cruise around town looking for girls, you know, normal stuff, you know, normal teenage guy stuff. And, um, he picks, he comes to pick me up one day and, um, we lived on a corner street when we moved into town. So technically I had two front doors and this is going to play a factor in the second story that I tell, which is, which is super weird. But, um, you know, he comes to pick me up and, um, the one, my one driveway, uh, you know, on the one street, like I said, I lived on a corner. Um, you know, my mom's car was in the driveway, but my stepdad's was. Um, I just assumed my stepdad, um, he grew up and and had previously lived in in another town before him and my mom got married. Uh, his his vehicle was gone, but he was also um, a baseball coach for the for the high school. So I was like, well, he's you know probably a practice or something. It was during the summer, and um. You know, my buddy Ryan comes to pick me up and he's like, dude, you know, let's go to, you know, such and such town. You know, I'm going to see my girlfriend, you know, she's she's got a younger sister. And I'm like, all right, you know, let's go. Well, I heard this voice out of um, my mom's bedroom window, which was directly above the that particular front door, which was by the driveway. Uh, right above that was my mom and stepdad's bedroom window. And I heard this voice come out of it and it was my mom's voice. And she's like, Hey, she's like, don't be going anywhere. You know, I need you to, you know, do your chores before you go anywhere, which I grew up with five kids. For the most part, I grew up with a single, a single mother, um, in my household, so we all grew up having specific chores and stuff. My mom taught us all to be very self-reliant. Um, so I told my buddy Ryan, I was like, all right, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, leave right now. I got to do this stuff, you know. He's like, oh, all right, no, no big deal, man. I'll catch up with you later. And I was like, all right. And you got to remember, this is, I'm 37 years old. I was 17 at the time. So this is, you know, 1997, 1998. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's no cell phones really there's there. Well, there is none. There's pagers and then there's home phones. That's, right, that's right. literally it. So, um, I'm home for, you know, I, I did the dishes and stuff and, in, in, in the kitchen there. And, um, I was home for about an hour or so. This was after my buddy left about an hour and, um, all of a sudden my mom and stepdad come in through that kitchen door. I see him pull up through the driveway and I'm like, I don't even remember her leaving after she, you know, told me out the bedroom window to stay home. So my mom comes in and I looked at her and I'm like, where did you, I was like, when did you actually leave? And she's like, you know, we've been in such and such neighboring town um, for like five hours. We've been there all day. Like we left before you were even around today. And I'm like, I was sitting there and I was like, wow. 
What is that? You know, did I hear her voice? And it was specifically my mom's voice. And um, she's like, no, we've been gone all day long. And within a minute of me just trying to figure this out, the phone rings. And it's my buddy Justin. It's Ryan's younger brother. And he calls me, and he's like in a frantic state. And he's like, dude, he's like, Ryan got in this car wreck, man. He's like, he's like, he got, he's like, he, he's like, I can't explain the details now. He's like, I'm on my way to pick you up. He's like, he's literally in the ER, like right now. They, they flew him, so, you know, from, for some, uh, by Samaritan, you know, it, oh. to literally the best hospital in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I'm like, oh shit. I was like, okay. So I look at my mom and I'm like, I was like, how, Uh you know, and within this 15 minutes of my buddy Ryan getting there, I explained to my mom what happened. And my mom is very, very strict religion. So she's, she's sitting there. She's like, she's like, this is, this, this was Jesus, you know, telling you to stay here. And I'm like, I, mom, I, and even then I was always very Uh weird about organized religion. I'm like, Uh whatever, mom. Like now's not the time for your, for your Jesus talk. Okay. Like, you know, and I, you know, I respect other people's religions, but I was like, not now, mom, like Ryan's like got flu. you know, if you're flown by Samaritans, some serious shit's going down. Right. Right. So my buddy, uh, Justin picks me up and we go, you know, and, and see Ryan and I'm in there cause I knew his parents very well. Cause I was friends with both the brothers and they told me what happened. And what happened was while he was on the specific, um, state road, um, his tire blew and he crossed center and went off to the left lane and he hit an embankment to a driveway of a business. And this embankment was, you know, there was a ditch and then the embankment and it was roughly like a three foot concrete wall. Well, when he hit that, he flipped his car end over end. Um, he was not wearing a seatbelt. And ironically enough, that's what saved his life was not wearing a seatbelt. Right. Right. To this day, he will not wear a seatbelt because of that. But his head went through the sunroof. Um, you know, that that saved his life. Just his and he hit the brakes so hard that when he crashed, his right ankle, his right foot was actually wrapped around the brake pedal mm-hmm. after the uh, impact of the crash. So we're in that, we're in the ER and he's getting ready to go into like emergency surgery and all the stuff. And we're talking to the first responders on the scene and the first responders like, and the doctors are like, well, who are you? This is only for family right now. And I'm like, you know, his parents and his brother are like, no, like this is like one of his best friends. Like he was supposed to like, they all thought that I was with him. Mm -hmm. because the last they knew, you know, like I said, before the age of cell phones, last they knew he was going to pick me up and then we were going to go. So I'm sitting there and the first responders straight up tell me they're like, you were supposed to be in that car with him in the passenger seat. I'm like, well, yeah, I was like, I ended up, you know, my mom, you know, ended up and at the time I didn't want to explain to them, you know, the situation that I was right, currently right, right. in, you know? So I was like, yeah, my mom told me not to go at the last minute. And he, they literally said, sat me, sat me down and they're like, dude, if you would have been in that car, there is absolutely no way that you would have survived the crash the way that it happened. Right. Like you dodged a major bullet right here. So, I'm sitting in this, you know, ER in shock. We're in there for hours. You know, they're doing emergency surgery on his on his ankle to repair it. I mean, he still to this day walks with a limp because of it. Pins, needles, the whole nine yards. Well, after, you know, he gets out of surgery um, the next day, I'm sitting there talking to him. And we're telling him, you know, like what the doctors were saying. And he looks at me and he's like, dude, he's like, you know. He he's like, I bet your mom's pretty happy that she told you to stay home, you know, because the first responders also told him, 
that if I would have been in the car, like I would have died instantly because of the way the crash uh, unfolded. And I told him, I was like, listen, dude, like my mom wasn't even home when that and and he knew my mom you know so he's like dude that was your mom's voice like i specifically heard her tell you to stay home and i'm like i know dude like i'm still trying to wrap my head around all of this that has gone on and you know to this day me and him still talk about that like we will be we will be at a bar drinking beers and he's like dude that he's like that literally is the one thing in my life besides the car wreck that has scared scared me to just beyond belief and you know my mom is a firm believer in divine intervention and stuff mm-hmm. like that and you know, I'm not specifically, you know, I'm not a Christian. Don't get me wrong. I do, you know, believe that Jesus was a real person and that he was capable of miracles. Right. I do not right. believe that he was the son of God. Mm-hmm. I do not believe that he was a prophet, you know, stuff like well, that. What but about, What about if you were in that, spending all that time in that basement? What if, you know, there was something there that could mimic we know that's possible. Yes. And just mimicked the voice. Like, I've got to stop him because I know. I mean, maybe got connected with you since you spent all that time in the cellar. We don't know. We're just speculating here. Yeah. Um, and do I believe in divine intervention? I absolutely do. What For, for lack and, of a better word. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's exactly you know, right. Your Lack's spirit a better guide. Word. It could have been your spirit guide. It could have been your higher self, Justin. We don't know. But, Mm -hmm. you know, as far as that goes, my listeners know that I, you know, I I absolutely believe on that angle. However, I also believe everything else as far as it could be, you know, a mimic. It could have been, we know that there's a ghost out there that can mimic, you know, something maybe Mm -hmm. took a, for lack of a better word, took a liking to you and knew that something was coming up that could mimic that and do that and throw that that's incredible. And I've heard multiple stories along that line that it could be. So you could call it divine intervention. A lot of people would say guardian angel. A lot of people would say spirit guide or just a spirit or a ghost that could mimic that and make you stay. That's incredible. And I'm glad it did because you're here. You know, I've had yeah. plenty of those things that have said, you know, you know, the light turns red that says don't go. And for you know, everything in your body says, well, the light's red, I'm going to go. And then all of a sudden, a tractor trailer blows a light, you know, and you yep. would have died. Um, what's the reason for it? We don't know. A lot of people would think, okay, well, you were supposed to go on, depending on what philosophical path you take, you were supposed to go on and do something. This wasn't your time. I think it's totally, it could be paranormal. It could be supernatural. It could be both. For sure, yeah. But it was something. Yeah. It was, it was something. definitely something. It was something that, um, for lack of a better term, like like you said, you know, divine intervention, mm-hmm. I do believe it was, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, what exactly it was, I'm not 100% sure. And, you know, just by you saying it, I never totally thought that, but I literally was the only person that would go down in that basement. Like, my dogs were scared. They would yes. stand at this at the foot of that basement steps and just mm-hmm. whimper. Like, they would not even go down well, there's, there. There's been plenty but. of times, Justin, that, you know, um, whether it's a negative, I mean, it could have been, we're taking a lot for granted here. I mean, if you want to really look at it and really uncover everything that could possibly be, it could have been even a negative energy energy that wasn't done with you yet, that thought it could work with you. You know what I mean? There, there's yeah, been negative sure. energy energies that have whatever you want to put on that, whether it be human or elemental or demonic, whatever you want to say, that have mimicked family members to other family members. There have been that. So we don't know what the process for it doing that or stopping you was, what its intent was, what it had planned for you down the line. We don't know. We can't necessarily say it was good because it stopped you from something bad. That would be taking a lot for granted. So, I mean, if you really want to look at all the doors, we have to bring that one in too. 
I mean, maybe it felt like, you know, it had you for some reason and wanted to work on you and whatever, and it wasn't done with you yet. That's possible as well. We can't say that it was divine because it, something good came from it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We can't say it. But we'd like to think that it stops you from being hurt. Um, it definitely mimicked your mom's voice. No doubt yeah. there. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's amazing. And the outcome yeah. was fantastic. You're still here. <laughs> that's that's yeah, crazy. It, uh, it was yeah. one of the few experiences I've had that really, like, yeah. shook me, for, for lack of a better term, shook me to the core. Absolutely. I was, I was just, I was speechless. Mm -hmm. And even my mom to this day is very weird about that topic, you know, right. when it gets brought up. She literally just... We'll sit there and just shake her head. Well, she's, she's probably like, going to you know, lean more towards the, you know, toward the divine. I mean, her baby boy is alive. Of course, she's well, yeah, and that's that. you know, that's understandable. I'd be the same way. And Absolutely. I tell you what, on a separate topic, I if you knew some of the stuff, because I have two sons. My younger one uh, is extremely um, sensitive uh, emotionally, mm -hmm. and because of that, like if I told you some of the things my younger son has said. It would blow your mind, Cisco. Mm. Blow your mind. Like, I love it. I love it because oh the younger God. ones. Do you ever do an episode on weird kid, kid, things that kids, kids say? say. <laughs> My younger son will freak your whole li all of your listeners out. Honey, it's insane. <laughs> I, I lived in a little place in Alabama. You want to talk about backwoods at the base of a, of a mountain. And I can't tell you what my family was going through at the time. We were dealing with a family member that was so far into addiction. It was just, I mean, it was survival. It was like, do we let him, do we keep going? You know, what do we do? We're in a town that you went in, you drove in, you could feel the heaviness. There was something going on there. And I've never seen so a town that was like that, that had so many churches and so many people in it. It's interesting that were just so methodical. I, I, I mean, I cannot explain this town. I mean, the minute I, it, it was out of sheer desperation that we were there. We're in this house, the history of the house, multiple things happened there. Man hung himself in the garage, um, suicide, death. I mean, it was death all over the place. We didn't find out till after we moved. So I'm busy dealing with this family member is going through this full on full blown addiction problem and I'm doing everything we can to possibly save him. Meanwhile, my son's little, I'm talking 10 and eight, maybe they're dealing with shadow figures in this house that ripped things off the wall. Uh, pictures that I had, um, some spiritual, some native American, um, you name it just for strength. You know, you, you get things, you gather things in life. They're on the floor. They're hung upside down. All kinds of weird things happen. I find out five years later that these kids, just out of sheer faith in what they believed in and the intent that they put out there, they would see this black mass come down the hallway. They had bunk beds and they would see it come down the hallway and literally go up the ladder to come on to like the top bunk. Can you imagine being a kid mm -hmm. eight years old seeing this? Uh, and, no, I couldn't okay. imagine. I don't want to imagine that because I, I freak out. <laughs> Just a black mass that f looked like from what their description was. And I can't tell you what it was. It could be the guy that hung himself. It could be. I, I don't know. It's yeah, endless. a number of things. It's yeah. But, but that's evil. cool. That's the cool part about what you're telling me right, right now is that you do know the history. Right. I knew a little bit. You, you, you went back and looked into it. Yeah. Right. But these kids just basically sat up and said what they, what they thought they needed to say to just put it in its place and it dissipated. And they were fine with it. And as an eight-year-old <laughs> little boy would do, went back to sleep. There, oh, there, I know. And to not, what? That's all I can say is like, what? Shit. What? And I'm hearing this five years later. I'm like, well, we didn't want to bother you, mom. You had other things you were doing. Are you out of your mind? You're not telling me this stuff. <laughs> well, we took care of it. You know, we just, you know, we said this or we said a prayer and we said this. 
and it just went away. So we knew that would work and we did it. And there it was. And they were matter of fact about it and went on about their business, grabbed their baseball bat and their glove and went out the door. And I'm like, excuse me? But that's yeah. kids. That's kids. Yeah. I mean, you look my, at any movies, one... man. Stephen King yeah. was all about that. It was about the, the intent and their faith and what they believed in. And to this day, people are doing that. It's Kids and are amazing. The, the, that's the thing about my seven-year-old, too, is all the experiences that he's had and that he's told us about, like, he fully understands it, and he's not. he's never been scared. Uh-huh. Crazy. Ever, he's never expressed any kind of fear about anything that he's seen. Which I'm telling you, it, it would blow your mind. But uh, it, it blew you. me in his mom's mind, and I mean, it got to the point where my boys' mom, we're not together anymore, but we're still very good friends and obviously very good co-parents. And she has called me freaking out, crying like, "You are not going to believe what he said." Uh And just amazing things. And none of it, he he has never expressed any kind of fear. Mm -hmm. It's always, uh, you know, like, you know, well, I can't, I didn't sleep good because, you know, this guy, I'm in in armor, Mm -hmm. you know, full, like, knighted armor. He just wouldn't stop talking to me. He, he he wouldn't shut up, and I couldn't get any sleep. Uh-huh. You know, he talks about an old man who visits him, but he says he knows him, and, you know, he's very friendly, but he just wouldn't leave him alone, and he couldn't get any sleep. Never fear. It's always like anno- – it's like he's annoyed. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And he's, like, <laughs> and, and he's probably a medium and just dealing I'm, with this in stuff is possible. In all honesty, and my – my ex knows how I am, so mm-hmm. I specifically told her, I was like, do not tell him to block this stuff out. Right. And, and she's like, no, I know. She's yeah. like, I know how you are about this stuff, right. and I would never do that right. to him. But what she does is she will sit him down, and she will just be like, tell me everything. Right. Tell me, right. you know, what happened. And right. I think it's really good for him. It is. And That's so cool, he, Justin. He keeps, he tries to keep. She, tr- we try to keep him open and not make him feel like it's anything weird or bad or right. anything like that. And that he and can he go just... and talk to you guys is num- is is major because I cannot yeah. tell you oh, the yeah. amount of people. That's one of the reasons I started this podcast. My second episode, I had somebody come in here and she was extremely reluctant. It was one of those interviews that you just kind of like it was it was me talking and trying to get her to pull. I was pulling, you know, trying to get her to say things. But mm-hmm. once she got past her shy, you know, uh, persona and just let it rip, the whole point of that episode was episode number two was all about, you know, trying to get people to understand that people have abilities, whether it's empathic or medium or psychic or whatever. And kids sometimes see things in their closet and there really is something in the closet. And what, yeah. do, you, what do you do in that case? And, and, you know, young teenagers and young kids, if they can't talk, I was one of those people that were told I wasn't seeing what I was seeing and I was seeing what I was seeing. And everybody in the house was seeing it, but they wouldn't talk about it. It took me 20 years to figure out that I was nuts, that they were all seeing the same thing, described it to a T, uniform and all. And what a horrible thing for a kid to go through. So we wanted, doing this podcast too, we wanted to reach out and go, look, if you've got abilities, you know, you don't necessarily go to a Ouija board and try to figure out, talk to the spirit. Go to your community, see, go to a psychic fair, talk to a lot of different people at once and see what fits for you. Find your path because Mm -hmm. these kids, um, and I say kids, but that, that means anything from, you know, young all the way up to teen, you might not have an outlet for it. And I've seen it in my lifetime where they didn't have a place to reach out. And I think it's so cool that you're talking to yours and letting him speak and not well, saying you know not drugging him with something to shut it up either you know that's so cool. oh for sure so yeah cool. so cool yeah and that's if, if you can imagine i mean me and you have talked personally and you've seen me interact on facebook i'm i'm the cool parent cisco <laughs> we both know that okay like <laughs> no doubt in my mind brother 
<laughs> I'm sure you had no doubt about no that, doubt, but I no just doubt. put it out there. No doubt, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're such a good parent, too. You're so hands-on. You're so heart-on. And that's so oh, cool to yeah. see, you know, because a lot of, you know, some people are. I mean, we're in a day and age where everybody's trying to pay for their SUV and their house payment. And they get all caught up oh. in what they're doing. And they forget about the kids. But to be able to have, I mean, let's look at the movie Six Cents. I know oh, I people. Love it. love it. I know people that have lived their life like that. And nobody yeah, will listen sure. to them. In some cases, there is something under the bed. There is something in the closet. It happened to me. That was my first experience. I had a head, a freaking head, come out of the closet and fly at me and scream and go through the wall behind me. That was my first experience I can remember. And I tried to tell people that this was happening and you weren't allowed to talk about it in my house. My dad was having none of that nonsense. They were more scared of my dad's reaction. My dad was World War II. Back oh, then, yeah. Back then you called it shell shock. Mm -hmm. he, he, listened, he dealt with his shell shock with alcohol. And he was six foot seven and full tilt boogie. That was my dad. Yeah. You didn't put up with nonsense. You didn't talk oh, about yeah. it. So you could have a ghost come out of your closet and toss your bed and toss your tear up your report. And I mean, all these things happen, you know, and throw things and steal things and app port things. And you'd be sitting at the dinner table and everybody would be just trying to eat their macaroni and cheese real quiet and looking around and going, is anybody going to talk about this? And you didn't. So for that kid or that teenager that was growing up in this, there are things out there that you can do. You don't have to hide behind the... The veil of, you know, I'm different or I'm crazy because it's, there's something happening, Justin. It seems, I don't know if it's, I've talked about this multiple times. I don't know if it's an energy change. I don't know if it's a dimension change. I don't know what it is, but it's obviously, maybe it's more information available. Maybe it's Google. I don't know. But it seems to be more. Somehow yeah. there's more, you know. Yeah. And for, I think the consciousness of the human race is is evolving, changing something. Personally, that's that's personally me. I think it's it's mm -hmm. the evolution of the mind. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe we're coming into all this, and that triggers something else. I, I'm not smart enough to say. Well, I what think it is. I think people are more open to. They're more open to being open about it, if yes. that makes sense. Yes. Yes. You, you know, yes. it's it's. I think there's been so many documented cases with when it comes to um, social media and the Internet. And mm -hmm. I think it's more people saying, OK, there's other people out there who yeah. have experienced this kind of thing. So I'm I feel better and I feel like I'm not going to get as judged if I come out with my story. True. True. And I think I think by that happening, I think as as a culture and as, um, you know, like a like a full fledged human race, I think I think our minds are starting to, to become more open to yeah. all this stuff. And with that, with everybody's because, you know, like in like in witchcraft or in any kind of paranormal situation, like the more open the person is, the more chance there is for that person to experience something. Yes. And it's like and an I think exercise. Like, it's like an exercise, yes. just like anything else. Yes. It's like the first exactly. time you ever were told to do five, ten push ups. Yep. You could do five, maybe three, four, five, six good ones before you start dropping and sloping. But after that you think, Oh man, I'll never be able to do twenty. And before a week is over, you're doing exactly. fifty. <laughs> yep. it, the, 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 and that's exactly the right. And I think as a, as a human race, we're yes. we're starting to get so much more open. Yes, I think collectively that that makes us have more experiences and more people willing to talk about those experiences. Absolutely. So I think it's absolutely that's just true. my personal opinion, you know, but. I wanted to get your opinion before I let you go, not to cut you off, but I want to no, get this out. I will, I will hate myself if I don't ask you this question. <laughs> it's being, your show. Ask away. In the fact that you, you, you're you kind of digging the paranormal and the supernatural, and you kind of digging the, yeah. the mysteries and stuff like that. All of it. Yeah. Something that's 
been with me for a long time and I don't know how you feel about psychics or mediums or psychic detectives and things like that. I've got, I've got some friends that I've spent a lot of time. And I mean, when I say a lot of time, I'm like in the 25, 30 year realm here of okay. watching certain people. Now there's an awful lot of psychics that work with crime investigation. Yeah. Yeah. With have, cold cases for right, sure. Absolutely. And I have some friends that are, um, and some acquaintances that are absolutely getting into that now and just like poop, not really poo pooing the whole uh, evidence thing, but they're kind of in the same realm I am as far as going into a haunted place and trying to prove that there's a ghost is kind of like going to a bar and proving that there's beer. You know, that kind of, you know, like they want to get into the next level of stuff. So they're trying to help people and they're trying to get into. Maybe we can help solve some of these issues in paranormal crime scene investigation. If mm -hmm. that makes sense to you. Yeah, now, for sure. And like looking, remote viewing and stuff like that. Well, yeah. And actually going in, if, if, if you go into a house where someone was murdered and that ghost is there and says, this happened to me. This is who did it, yeah. and this is what's yeah. going on, and this is how it was done. And they start telling you information that was never leaked out on the police report. You have to kind of take it, make you know, pay attention to that. That makes sense yeah. to me. All right. Well, here's the situation. I thought this would interest you. Yeah, sure. I have. Uh, I want to say she's a psychic medium. I might have that wrong because I always get those. Everybody calls themselves something different, but they do mean different things. Mm -hmm. She's home and she's just writing a book and has nothing really to do with, you know, more of the paranormal stuff. She's just writing a book about her experiences and a little bit of her, her abilities. All of a sudden she's clicking into this and she's, I guess, clicking into the energy of this. And all of a sudden, this girl's standing there. And she happens to have the ability to see those who have not crossed over yet. Everybody's a little different. Some people see, see people that are crossed. It's all different. Yeah, Her ability sure. is to see those who have not crossed. Well, she's clicking into this situation. And this girl happened to have been murdered within three miles from her house. Um, the situation was she was at a car wash and she's washing her car and it's the kind of car wash where you get out and you put the coins in and you wash your car with the foam and all that kind of mess. And it's like the oh, little yeah. stalls kind of thing. I've never been to a car wash since I've heard this. I'll go through the drive throughs but I'm not going to the outside. I'm not doing it. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it really seems like your defenses are down kind of. I, I don't like them. Yeah. They feel funky. So she goes to this. And these guys are sitting in there, and they're basically looking for, um, and it seems sad, but you and I both know that there are prowlers out there. And they're looking oh, for that. Oh, yeah. Yes, and they're looking for that um, that chance. And it's just totally yep. random. Okay. Well, she's there cleaning her car. They block her in. They pick her up. They throw her in the car. Now, this girl, God bless her, they ride around. And they're ones in the back seat with her, torturing her, raping her, burning her with cigarettes, doing all kinds of other things. They pull over. One gets in the back. They switch. One drives. And he gets in the back and does the same thing. This girl went through hell. They basically killed her. They mm -hmm. cut her up. And they threw her parts right around where this girl's, where this lady's house is. She has no idea that this is, this is what happened. Now, the case was about, I'm going to, might get my time off, but I think it was about 15 years difference between the time she showed up in her home and the time the crime actually happened. Okay. She tells the psychic medium and keeps bugging her and says, you have to do something. The case basically, I don't know the exact words, but she was basically telling her the case has gone cold. They're still out there. They're going to do it again. They've done it again. They're going to do it again. There is a man on this case. He was a detective. She gave the name. She says, you have to help me. I, I, you need to do this. Now, the girl, and we're talking about the ghost at this point, wasn't really in it so much for herself and revenge, like I have to get this, but she knew they were going to do it again, and she felt like she didn't want to go 
over. Now, again, this is all from the psychic medium that's telling the story. Okay. She didn't want to cross over because she knew that she had to do something because they were going to do it again. They were still doing it, the same M.O. Hmm. So she bugged the lady so much that the lady goes down. Can you imagine? Now you're now you're the psychic medium. Let's look at it that from this point of view. You walk into a police office, you know, an a police station, and you say, "I want to talk to Sergeant So and So and Detective somebody," and you say, "I know where the body is." Well, what happens to you? You get arrested and put. you yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this happened to her. She's like, she sat in the cell for a couple of hours at least till they could figure out what was going on. And finally, the, the guy started listening to her. She goes, look, she gave me a little bit of information. And if I'm wrong, fine, I'll go home. And you've heard the last of me. But I need you to look into this. She says that you have evidence on this case, on her case. If you will just go look in the evidence, look in there. There is a pack of cigarettes. I think it's a Marlboro. Okay. Pack of cigarettes. If you look in there, there's a cigarette that the man started to smoke, put it out, and put it back in the thing. It's got DNA on it. And at the time, DNA wasn't used. So they never mm-hmm. tested the cigarette. The guy listens to her, says he'll check it out, goes in there, gets the evidence, checks it, Gets the DNA and finds out they've got the guy. They catch the dude. Now, what do you got to say about that? Um, personally, I'm all for that stuff, but <laughs> the amazing. the hard part is That's amazing. <laughs> the hard part is getting law enforcement to believe it because right. there's been there's been a couple documented um in in the in the true crime mm-hmm. genre. There's been a couple documented cases where that actually was the case yes. where a spirit informed either a family member or even an unknown living person yes. about details of the case that nobody else could have known. Um, yes. One of the more famous ones happened, I believe, in the early 1900s, I want to mm-hmm. say, and that was in, I want to say, and I can't be a hundred percent certain, but I think it was around North Carolina area, South Carolina area, somewhere around there. Um, and it, it's one of the more famous, well documented ones where the spirit of a murdered victim came forward and informed the family members that her husband was in fact the person that had killed her, and that uh, the husband. What they did was they took. I believe it was um, the the dead woman's mother into court, and she testified about what her uh, daughter, who was dead at the time, had told her. And they ended up prosecuting and finding him guilty. Yeah. Um, the hard part with, with that comes um, when it comes to true crime and not to get into legalities of it because – if if you can if they can point enough evidence physical evidence in the right direction and with with DNA making advances that it has recently that's a huge fucking help that's yes. a huge step and I'm sorry yes. I just dropped the f bomb I didn't even realize <laughs> it that is a that is a huge help right yes, there okay but at the same time you can't go on hearsay and word of mouth true so. When we were talking earlier about circumstantial evidence, you know, hearsay is hearsay, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So if it comes down to that, don't get me wrong, it's great, but you have several factors to consider. First, the first thing you have to consider is you have to find the right person in that law enforcement field that's going to believe you. Okay, and and it's a lot harder. It's it's a lot easier said than done. Right. You know, because this isn't Hollywood. You're not going to have a psychic medium walk into a police department and start giving all these all this information on cold cases, because like her in her experience, what's going to happen is she's going to get arrested Mm -hmm. and she's either she, you know, maybe not even arrested, but she's going to at least get contained because of the knowledge that she does have. Exactly. And they're going to question her extensively and when she comes forth and says how she knows that information 
um, you know, what's going to happen is, is, is these officers are more than likely not going to believe her. Now, let's say one out of 10 officers actually does believe her. If that officer does decide to contact her, um, they're going to do it off the record. Yes. They're going to do it out of uniform. They're going to do it off the clock. Yep. And they're going to talk to her. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to get it to where they can get physical evidence. Like, okay, like if do you know, you know, habeas corpus, nobody, no case. You know, if it's a person whose body has not been found or if it's a person who's missing currently that they don't know is dead, they're going to try to get that information first. And, you know, when it comes to that, like I said, you're going to have one out of 10 cops that are going to believe you. And that's if you're lucky. That's if you're lucky. I think she got really lucky, man. I think the whole thing was the cop knew that he had to go in behind the scenes. Yeah. Basically reopen the cold case. And say, I want to go over this evidence, not say why he wanted to exactly, go over the evidence. Exactly, exactly. And did it all yep. behind the scenes and then said, well, we've got evidence here. I want to test this cigarette for DNA. Exactly. Matched it to somebody who was locked up already. Um, actually, it was the partner that was, you know, in on it. And he spilled the beans. But they did it all behind the scenes. They never brought her into it. The only time she was exactly. brought into it was when she was in there for questioning because she's like, I don't know what to do with this information. But see, that makes me feel for two people. You know, I understand everything you said. and Everything you said is 100% right on the money. But yeah. if you think about the ghost, okay, coming to this woman who knew she was going to do something, you know, um, and pushed on her enough till she finally said, "Ah, I got to I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm going to go down to the police station. What else can I do? Because she's showing up in the back of her car when she's going to pick up her kids at school. I mean, it's that whole thing. And it just makes your head rattle to think. Um, So many things had to fall into place for that case to come through. And yeah. I heard another yep. one that sounds even crazier was um, this young, uh, I just remember she was Asian. Um, and the only reason I mentioned that she was Asian is because she was, she because of her culture, she was so much more gentle coming forth with the information. So she chose to come through another woman. And this guy is like hearing his wife talk about this woman who was killed in the apartment next door. They had no idea there was a woman killed next door. And the guy, the husband took over it. And I think that was one of the only cases where it was actually stated that a spirit, I have to look into that case and bring, bring you some facts, but that was one of the only things where, um, a spirit, um, communication was ever brought up in court, which it, it must've been a crazy day in that court. I can't imagine the judge that let that through. But there was other evidence to back it all up. You know, it, she had basically had a guy come in to fix her TV and it was all a ruse. And he wound up raping her and killing her, wrapping her in a rug, trying to burn her body. And she came through to the neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? And you imagine that I cannot imagine having that ability, having somebody show up that is basically dead as a ghost Mm -hmm. and telling me my body is here. Now, what do you do with that information? Can you live with not doing something? Yeah. And that's, that's the touchy part of it is when you, once you introduce that into the legal spectrum or into the courtroom, um, that's a very, very touch and go topic when you start getting involved in the legality and the, the court, the courtroom scenario because you're you're not going to see cases um because i've i've personally touched with um you know mediums on missing persons cases Uh and unsolved deaths and they they will all tell you the same thing um they will not be involved they will not be named they will Mm -hmm. they will lead the officers to the evidence and then the officers go from there right because once you once you um introduce 
um, the the supernatural or the the psychic aspect yes. to a true crime case or an unsolved case, whatever whatever the situation might be, um, that will indefinitely, you know, without a doubt, mm-hmm. it will put that um, that doubt in people's mind. Oh, absolutely. And like we had talked earlier, if you're going to prosecute somebody for a murder, mm-hmm. I've worked, um, I've done several cases to where we more than likely know who did it, but there's not enough evidence to bring forth to actually prosecute somebody. You have a double jeopardy law. Like if you, if you go to charge somebody with a murder and they either get acquitted or found not guilty, you cannot try them again for the same murder. Absolutely. You what what they can do is like the the only other thing they can really do is is you can get charged for wrongful death. Mm-hmm. And and that's just that's literally just a basic civil suit. Like OJ Simpson got found guilty of wrongful death. Right. He paid he paid the family a sum of money and that was that was it. Right. Yeah. And actually well, and, he and, was he was he was um he he was supposed to pay a lot more. But it's just basically going into it and going, yeah, okay, you know, and then there's a lot of loopholes after that. You're absolutely 100% correct. The psychics or mediums have to do everything behind the scenes and basically lead the officers to a certain thing and let them go on their trail. And then they have to figure out how to explain how they found that. Yes, yes. And that's how it's done. It's amazing. And that's the tough part. But the, the, the cool fact about that is, is... Even when they do explain how they found the evidence, you can you can get by on that, whether it's a psychic medium or whatever the case may be, because at the end of the day, you still have the physical evidence right. to prove that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like how yes, you I come do. about it. Don't get me wrong. The legality of how you come about getting the physical evidence does play a factor. Mm-hmm. But. If as long as you're not doing anything illegal to mm-hmm. get that evidence, mm-hmm. then that does hold up in court right. and it does end up playing a factor. And to be honest with you, there's been there's been a lot of cases that have been solved with the help of mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's I think it's personally a great thing. I think it's I think it's absolutely amazing. And. I honestly wish that more people in law enforcement were more open to it. Um, like I had told you um, earlier, I've personally talked to and I personally work with a lot of people in law enforcement, detectives, cops, um, yeah. all that stuff. When I'm working, when I'm, uh, you know, working a case or after I've done one, when they contact me afterward and you know, you'd be surprised. Like there's a lot that are open to them. One of my, Um, really good friends who's going to be doing he's done a previous episode with me and he's going to be doing another one here coming up uh, in the next couple weeks Um, he's very open to it because he's had personal paranormal experiences in his life so he's you know off the record personally told me he's like if I ever got approached with something like this he's like I take it seriously Mm -hmm. he's like but he's you know he'll also tell you there's guys that are in, you know, my jurisdiction that will literally laugh in their oh, face yeah. oh, and yeah. not even and not even look into it. And yes. if he can be convinced, he told me he's like, if you can convince me that you have information that not everybody knows, because there's a reason that cops keep cases um what they're what is referred to as close to the vest they won't release a lot of information to the public and the reason they do that is so that that they don't damage an investigation but if there is somebody involved down the road and they know this specific information that has not been released to the public they can quickly determine whether or not that person does have that you know whether or not they're a liar or whether or not they're just trying to get attention or claim you know claim have a little claim to fame like involving the case um but there's certain reasons that they do what they do and and my personal buddy um who who is involved in this stuff he 
he's one of the very few that I've personally talked to. And I've personally talked to a lot, like I said, but he's one of the very few that is very open to that kind of stuff. But you can't just come up to him and say, hey, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. You got to come to him with and 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 be real with him basically and just show say him listen. evidence i mean when you have they, a medium yeah, yeah. when you have a medium and you put her in a car or psychic and she's stopping where you found the body and you didn't exactly tell anything yep. about the case and then she's going here and she's going there i mean there's a lot to be said for that and i think that law enforcement is starting to really look at that i mean i've watched in my lifetime again you go back to old old shows like sightings or in search of and things like oh, that. oh i that love really sightings looked into, oh my gosh and looked into oh and they're bringing things. in search of back i know and, and i I'm watched so it. Excited. it was it was, it so, was really good i like the i like the concept of it show. yeah it really was I like the concept of it, and I've I've watched a lot of these mediums and psychics that have been in it for 25, 30 years, and yeah, they take them sure. serious, but they find a way to do their job the way they have to do it, and that works. And in the case that I brought up, all they had to do was go in there and relook at the evidence that they already had. And, and see, and that's that if, for, for psychic mediums who are out there listening, mm -hmm. and you're trying to help cold cases get solved that's how you have to go yes. about doing it yes I agree. you have to point the the officers in the right direction like if an officer says well yeah i mean i had this psychic tell me to look at this mm -hmm. you know it's that's not going to work well i think what, too, what they're you know they're yeah. going to have to literally say well i just had this hunch and i really wanted right. you know yeah. they have to go about it a specific way because of the legality of the situation absolutely and i really think that whole burger chef thing could be solved really quick too i i, I think so too i, I really percent believe that there was somebody in there covering something up for somebody i think I honestly believe that, too, mm -hmm. because there is no way that cops can accidentally mess up an investigation that bad. It was, it, it, yeah, I agree 100 percent. And that's just one. How many that's more? just one case in a small town in Indiana. Right. How that's many just more? one. How many more? And we sit yep. there and we we say that, you know, we all know that it's that 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 this evil exists and we talk about paranormal we talk about supernatural and i'll say it again i've said it a thousand times on this show the real monsters are usually human beings and what they do to each other and if we can do anything yep. to stop that if we can do anything to <laughs> stop those people from doing it again uh, i'm all for it you know and if Same if here. if yep. if if the paranormal, if ghosts and spirits have found a way to come back and work the system and come to the person, the crazy person that's going to go in there. I know it's happened to me. I have been called and pushed to certain things. I would never be able to even think about going in that direction. And you find yourself in a spot and you think, gosh, this is why I was here. This doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any normal sense to me. But I'm here and, I've, and I've, I'm here to do this one thing. And if that was supernatural or paranormal, who knows? We'll never be able to prove it scientifically. But that's the whole aspect of this. And what a wonderful subject it is. And my friend, I've kept you on here for so long. We've been rolling for hours. And I just About love you hours, so, yeah. <laughs> so much. I love you so, so much. And before I let you go, I need you to tell people where they can find you and this oh, wonderful cool. podcast and everything else. Tell me. All right. Well, uh, Mysterious Circumstances is uh, about two and a half years old. You can literally find me anywhere, <laughs> um, every anywhere and everywhere. Uh, my my Instagram is uh, Mysterious Podcast. Uh, there's a link to my personal account in there too. You're more than welcome to follow me. Um, the you know, like I said, iTunes, literally everywhere, uh, Facebook. Twitter. My Twitter feed is uh, at podcast MC um, Rev nine six, which just started up. Uh, you can find that on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the same name Rev nine six. Um, that should be on iTunes here pretty soon, uh, within the next week or two. But uh, 
But yeah, you can pretty much find me anywhere. I'm awesome. I'm pretty pretty easily accessible. You know that, Cisco. Absolutely. I'm I'm very in, I'm very interactive with with all kinds of people. I love uh, I love being that way. So yeah, it's is is awesome, easy. and it's a great it's a great world. And I cannot uh, stress enough about your fan base, your listeners. Um, the really well, you remember different... you remember in my group. It's it they're yeah. they're the greatest people ever. They are, they're my family, and man. Smart I love them. and smart, and they're on it. And you know, you put yeah. something up there, and you get so many different things in the thread. They're all, and that's the best part. Oh, it is. Like oh, all of is. them are diff- different ages. All yes. of them have all these specific professions. Yes. So it's so cool seeing all of them interact together when I post about a case yes. or a paranormal event or anything. It's so cool just sitting back and watching them go. It absolutely is. And you know, you love your listeners like I love mine, and I, I hope they. I hope they really enjoyed. This. I mean, you know, we went a lot of, you know, the gauntlet, you know, we went all different, different ways. We fell down some rabbit holes and it's just, oh God, we talked about it. So interesting. This this is my life though. I literally talk about all this shit all the time and I absolutely love it. Like this is what I do, you know? Yeah. And you know, if somebody, if we can reach out there and touch somebody or give somebody else an idea to go on their own thing, that's what it's all about. So Definitely get in there. Mysterious circumstances. Rev nine six. Um, if you want to be scared, I guarantee you, Rev nine six will not let you down. If you're interested in mysteries, you're gonna absolutely love every single episode out there. There's something for everybody. Justin, my brother, I love you, my friend. You know, I'm here anytime <laughs> for you, and I thank you so much for this conversation. I have absolutely enjoyed myself tonight. No, I I love you right back, and I appreciate you having me on. And like I said, when we planned this, like, like two three months ago or something like that, it uh, I've been looking forward to it ever since. And you know, hopefully we get to do it soon. And of course, you already know I'm going to have you on my show too. So oh, excellent. You know, and we'll we'll get down to some nitty gritty and yeah. and all that good stuff. I'll like tell you some good ghost stories. I will bring the brew, the boo, my brother. I promise. The <laughs> boo and the booze. That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I love you. You go get some rest. And thank you so much for being on this side of the gate tonight. I'd, I've just loved every minute of it. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome to Journey Through the Gate. And tonight, I have invited a friend to walk us through that gate. But be forewarned. It's not going to be an easy stroll now. I love being that way. So yeah, it's it's, it's Very awesome, easy. and it's a great it's a great world. And I cannot uh, stress enough about your fan base, your listeners. Um, the really well, you remember different... you remember in my group. It's it they're yeah. they're the greatest people ever. They are, they're my family, and man. Smart I love them. and smart, and they're on it. And, you know, you put something up there and you get so many different things in the thread. They're all And that's the best part. Oh, it is. Like all of them are different ages. All of them have all these specific professions. So it's so cool seeing all of them interact together when I post about a case or a paranormal event or anything. It's so cool just sitting back and watching them go. It absolutely is. And, you know, you love your listeners like I love mine. And I I hope they I hope they really enjoyed this. I mean, you know, we went a lot of, you know, the gauntlet, you know, we went all different, different ways. We fell down some rabbit holes and it's just, Oh God, we talked about so, it. I, so interesting. This, <laughs> this is my life though. I literally I talk about all this shit all the time and I absolutely love it. Like this is what I do, you know? Yeah. And you know, if somebody, if we can reach out there and touch somebody or give somebody else an idea to go on their own yeah, thing, that's what sure. it's all about. So Definitely get in there. Mysterious circumstances. Rev nine six. Um, if you want to be scared, I guarantee you, Rev nine six will not let you down. If you're interested in mysteries, you're gonna absolutely love every single episode out there. There's something for everybody. Justin, my brother, I love you, my friend. You know, I'm here anytime <laughs> for you, and I thank you so much for this conversation. I have absolutely enjoyed myself tonight. No, I I love you right back, and I appreciate you having me on. And like I said, when we planned this, like like two three months ago or something like that, it uh, I've been looking forward to it ever since. And 
you know, hopefully we get to do it soon. And of course, you already know I'm going to have you on my show too. So, oh, excellent. you know, and we'll we'll get down to some nitty gritty and yeah. and all that good stuff. I'll like, tell you some good ghost stories. I will bring the boo, the boo, my brother. I promise. The <laughs> boo and the booze. That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I love you. You go get some rest. And thank you so much for being on this side of the gate tonight. I I've just loved every minute of it. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you to Mr. Justin Rimmel. Remember those podcasts. If you like mysteries, you like unsolved crime, mysterious circumstances podcast, and if you like in-your-face horror, creepypasta, just good spoken story, that's going to be your Rev 9-6. He is the host and producer of both of those, and we are so glad to have him on this side of the gate. He's a dear friend and a wonderful, uh, smart individual. So also check out those groups. He's got the two Facebook pages for both podcasts. The podcast, you can catch him on any podcatcher, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, They're all over the place, just like this podcast here. Um, there's great people in that group, a lot of very smart people. Um If you like anything like getting in there and trying to talk about a mystery or forensics or anything like that, that's the place to go. It's fantastic. True crime, all of that. So I definitely recommend you checking those out. Also, check out rtpublic.com slash Cisco, S-Y-S-C-O. That is our swag page for our podcast. We have t-shirts. We have kids t-shirts. We have long sleeve, short sleeve, baseball. We have hoodies. We have notebooks, the canvas kind, the really nice ones with the uh, cover art, logo art on there. I'm always putting up new designs with the mugs, travel mugs, everything from posters, stickers, tapestries. We have all of that. It's really nice quality. They're making good stuff over there. Uh, And a little bit of that goes to help keep this podcast on the air and keep it free for you, my listeners, whom I I love each and every one of you. So thank you so much. Um, If all you can do is just pass this along and listen, that's fine with me. Um, We all do what we can. So thank you very much. And thanks again to Justin for being here. That is part of our podcast, People to Watch and to Listen to. And we're going to do some of those. Um, I really like doing those and getting in touch with other podcasters. I'm glad you like it, too. So thanks again. And remember, most importantly, keep those feet under those covers now. You keep that closet door shut because there are things that go bump in the night.